All right, so this is just gonna be kind of a bonus video, but uh, hopefully you still enjoy it. So um, we have the power supply set at five volts. We're gonna do a quick demonstration of uh, this module here. We're not gonna actually switch anything, but uh, this is a mechanical switch that is controlled electrically. So all the electronics going on over here, the electricity doesn't make it over there. There's a magnetic field that will uh, change where this is switched. So that's NC for normally closed. If you put a wire to that spot and a wire to that spot, it will be able to pass current when we don't energize the coil. When we give a signal, the proper signal, you can change it either high or low there. But when we give a signal to the input, then it will switch. And uh, so that's not normal. You're given the coil energy so it moves the switch to the normally open position there. So then these two points will be connected. You got a wire going to one and then a wire coming out of the other one. Electricity can flow through it in either uh, direction between those two points. And then you de-energize the coil, you cut power, it will uh, switch back right there. So now we'll zoom in. You can see on the relay, it's a five volt uh, relay. So you power this uh, module with five volts and it does everything on this side of the module at uh, five volts. It handles the current. We'll look at that coming up. When it comes to how much you can switch right there, so this is specific to the relay. And um, so you probably want to stay a bit uh, below this. The, the module probably can't handle this. But it claims 250 volts AC and uh, you should probably you know stick closer to maybe like 20 volts 30 volts or something uh, DC and then no more than uh, 10 amps right there it says 125 volts AC you can handle 15 amps of current again um, this part probably can't you know but maybe the relay can who, who knows also there's uh, metal pins down on the bottom that are soldered so don't put this on anything that is conductive otherwise all three of these will be uh, touching each other. You could have a big spark, a short circuit. So now let's uh, get to powering it. We got DC plus there and a DC minus in the middle. We'll zoom back. These alligator clips that are uh, coming out of the uh, power supply, we can uh, connect them. It helps to put them in the right way. So the lever is up here. It seems to connect uh, pretty good. If I turn it around, it looks like the bottom of this is a little bit wider, and so it slides out. It's not connected right now. Um, so if it's not connecting very easily, try turning it around and uh, see. So we got the lever on top, pretty straightforward. And you're gonna see a little bit of current, a little green LED right there. I turned the lamp up so we could see the writing a little easier there. Um, but yeah, we got the green LED. So you can see like two milliamps of current, it looks like. Um, this isn't as accurate as a multimeter, but it's pretty close. I had the power supply set where we can get up to 100 milliamps. And uh, we don't need uh, quite that much. But again, I have this set for active high. So if I connect the uh, positive, and it's going to set the uh, current to the uh, negative. And I can't leave my hand there. It'll block. So come around here. It's kind of awkward uh, position. But in any case, there you can see that we got, uh, well, the coil is energized, about uh, 76 milliamps total going through this module, 0 0.076. All right, so now I got the uh, module here. I took a jumper, actually, and I screwed it in there. So um, we can do this with uh, just one of the alligator clips there. And uh, you can just screw down jumpers and uh, clip the alligator clip for these prototype circuits if you want a better temporary connection. Um, but in any case, we should uh, unplug it and then uh, raise the voltage. Again, it's a five volt unit. I accidentally raised the voltage without unplugging them. I saw we had 10 milliamps of current on there. I knew something was wrong, uh, but I don't think I damaged the uh, module. So. We'll just continue on. So we got 13.6 uh, volts. So if you fully charge a lithium iron phosphate battery, usually they charge at a higher uh, voltage than this, but you remove the charger when it's done, it cuts power and the battery drops right down to probably 13.6 before it drifts down a little bit more uh, later on. And um, so I want to still power this. Um, but again, it's a five volt uh, module. So this is a uh, simple buck converter right there. So you plug it into a DC source, 
13.6 volts uh, will work plenty fine. You could go 8 volts to 35 volts. And um, we'll see this uh, later on. But what it does is it takes that extra voltage, that higher voltage outputs 5 volts, it's USB right there. And it uh, takes that extra voltage and it will be able to provide more current. So ultimately with this higher voltage, whatever the current needs of uh, this module, we saw what it was at uh, 5 volts. That's what it's going to output. Um, so when you're powering it with that higher voltage, and it has to be for this to work, it will actually demand less current from the power supply. So now I took the uh, battery clamps for the uh, unit right there and just clipped the power supply alligator clips to them. And I got them on opposite sides there to try to avoid a short circuit. We have the uh, USB right there to an alligator clip uh, jumper that I got. And we're going to plug that in. So you can see we got about 8 milliamps of current just to power this unit right here. So we're not going to get the nice conversions that we would get if we were directly uh, using a uh, buck converter at uh, higher currents where the uh, buck converter is not using so much of the uh, current. Now uh, we connect that there. There's also the jumpers down there and uh, so I'm going to try to move it over to avoid a short circuit and so we got uh, that one there and I believe I must have that upside down there you go looks like it wants to connect uh, better that way and uh, so looks like we're avoiding a short circuit in the back pretty good I filmed this earlier and they were shorting out um, so that was causing a problem, of course. Now, we got that. Uh, we got 9 milliamps of current. So it looks like it went up 1 milliamp of current. Um, before, it was like 2 milliamps of current. Um, but we were using less than uh, half of the voltage. Um, so it's taking that um, extra voltage right there. And it's converting it into some of the current. So you don't need as much current from the power supply. But that's not as illustrated as well as what we'll see here so it's active high we're going to go to the uh, positive supply there and uh, you remember when we switched it before it was uh, 76 milliamps of current so um coming out of here it's going to be 76 milliamps of current but uh, the power to power this unit you don't need as much uh, current because we got a higher voltage and uh, you're going to see that uh there you go when i jump up the voltage right there a uh, little more than like twice that now we have uh, less current so again the uh, module here needs uh, some of the current so it's not coming out uh, the math's not coming out perfect but uh, now we're down to 33 milliamps of current that the power supply needs to provide when we we're powering this at 5 volts with this unit um, by itself we needed 76 so there you can see that uh, we're uh, converting that extra voltage to uh, less current needed from the power supply even though the load needs the same um, unfortunately this uh, needs some current as well so if this was providing a lot more current then um, doubling the uh, voltage there like if we had like a uh, 10 volts then if we need like one amp coming out the power supply would probably only have to provide about 0.5 amps but since this needs so much current, um, relative to that, it's holding the numbers higher than what you would expect. Hopefully that makes sense.